Of course, our search input field is not going to remain like this. We are going to further design it later on. For now, I want us to focus on other aspects of the navigation bar, such as the responsiveness, and also when the user hovers on enough item, the color of the text should change in order to guide the user on which particular item they are about to click. So in order to change this color on hover, we need to go to our CSS file and look for the selector for link elements within the nav item. Remember, this includes all link elements in the nav item itself and on the drop downs within that nav item. So this selector works on all of them. So I'm just going to duplicate this selector and clear the code within it. I make sure I had add I add the hover selector and then I give this a color of this a color that looks bluish. When we refresh, we can now hover and we will know which particular link we are about to click. And this goes also for the elements in the drop down. So now we can proceed to make our navigation bar mobile responsive. In order to do that, we are going to be using CSS media queries. Now CSS media queries are simply a way for us to group certain styles in our CSS so that those styles can only apply on devices that have a certain particular width or a range of widths. So we normally use CSS media queries to make our websites mobile responsive. Now to further explain this, I'm going to do a quick demo here. So this, the current device on which I'm viewing this page has a width of about 1400 pixels but for much smaller devices let's say around 1024 pixels we would expect there to be uh, a, a, a little less space uh, at the corners so we can let's say reduce the padding here and here and then give a bit more space between the logo and the navigation menu so we could define a media query at this particular width and then the changes will apply or the CSS will define in that particular media query is to reduce the padding on the nav on the header itself, reduce the horizontal padding on the header. So let us go ahead and do just that. We'll define a media query at this particular width and then we reduce the padding on the header. So um, these are the styles for the header. I'm just going to scroll to the very bottom of these styles and I'll define media queries for header. Okay, so something like this and a media query looks something like media And the width that we are targeting is 1024 pixels. And then now we can define our styles within here to work or to apply only on devices uh, that have a width of 1024 pixels or lower than that. So maximum width is 1024 pixels. Okay, Um, what I usually do is uh, since the styles within the media query are usually just a modification of existing styles, I usually just copy all existing styles, everything, and then I paste it inside the media query. Okay. So now everything else that has been defined in the original style remains the same except the ones that we want to remove. So if something remains the same, there is no need to include it because it has already been, been defined in the original style. We don't want to change the height or the background color or the border bottom. Those styles remain the same, so we don't need to define them again in the media query. Even the flex property remains the same. The only thing we want to change is the padding and we want the horizontal padding Instead of being 8 rems, which is very many pixels, we're just going to bring it down to just 10 pixels. And that will be all. If you refresh, 
then you will notice that it pushes uh, to the ends uh, the padding disappears and there is uh, a lot of space now between the logo and the navigation bar so that's how we're going to proceed from element from selector to selector and then we modify accordingly for this particular screen width uh, I think this is the only change or the only responsiveness change we need to make everything else is working uh, normally so I don't need to include all of these styles I'm just going to remove all of them since they will just behave as their original styles I merely copied it down here for demonstration purposes so we will keep defining the media queries copying all the styles that we are interested in and then when we are done and happy with the results we delete all the duplicate styles so as far as the navigation bar is concerned I think that's all the changes we need to make for this particular uh, width of the device so in a similar way we are going to identify a good spot for the next uh, media query I'm just going to reduce it until I'm almost touching I think around here is safe for us to define another media query and for devices with this particular width I think it is time for us to to um, make this navigation menu disappear and then we'll introduce a menu icon on which the user can click and then this menu will slide in from the side so let us look for a menu icon in our icon or uh, uh, library okay so the icon we're going to use is this one that looks like uh, three horizontal lines I will copy the code for that and then in our HTML I'm just going to I'll also since we are going to be clicking on this I'll also wrap it around a span and give it a rule of button for accessibility sake I will also give it a class of menu icon because we will need to select it in our CSS and style it so let us first of all look how this this is going to look like on our browser we refresh and uh, yeah since we have added one element the other elements are a bit in disorder so the first thing we're going to do is this menu icon is too small so we need to increase its size a bit so let us do that right now we're going to select the menu icon and uh, we give it we increase the font size Okay, so just under the selector for the header and remember this is not in the media query this is the default style for the uh, menu icon so we are going to give it a font size of 24 pixels and then we'll give it a display of none but I'm going to comment this out so that we can see the change we made on the font size okay so this this is going to look better on mobile let me just make it 32 all right okay so this is what it looks like now we need to hide it by default and then only make it appear at this particular breakpoint and that is where we are our css or our media queries come in